Now, what we can also do is we can actually pass in data into the check or what are called properties. Okay, so this properties is an object right, where we have key value pairs. So we can actually go ahead, let's say, and let's say the label of this check, we're gonna say comes from the label of the properties. So we can say here now label equals my label. Okay. And yes, indeed that works. That means it's fairly easy to have two of these. We can have two checks. Okay. We could of course can break between these if we want. And yeah, that's working. Okay, uh, we do have a little bit of a problem and that is that our IDs are not unique and we want them to be unique. So we could, for instance, pass in an ID. And then add in just another attribute here, which becomes one of the properties. Um, and we can make this, uh, let's say we make it uh, check one and here check two. Okay. There's no particular reason we have the curly braces here because this is a string without the JavaScript application and it's a string afterwards too. The curly brace is just there because WebStorm automatically put in a curly brace there. All right, so that is working, and that shows us just a little bit about how this works. So now we know about that, let's go ahead and look at the app.js. So app.js, if we go look, that is a function. Um, it's just not actually using the properties, so it doesn't even declare the properties, and it returns some stuff here. So let's just look at this. So we've got a div with a class name, we have a header, and then an image, and then edit source.js to reload. And then we've got a link. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we're just looking at this, we can see that app is using its own CSS file. Okay. And it is importing that CSS file. Okay, so that's something specific uh, to our using React here. It allows us a way to basically, instead of having one single CSS file that everyone uses, go ahead and encapsulate. So we have a CSS file per component. So this particular component is using the app.css. And one nice thing about that is when you put in, for instance, class name, um, it knows what CSS we can add in there. And it's not gonna give us all the CSS of our entire application. It'll just give us the CSS that we're importing. Okay. Similar, we can import this logo here. And so it's actually importing the, from the, the file or logo to SVJ, right, which is a vector file. So when we go back to index.js, we can now replace this back with what we had, which was app slash. I think also it was like strict let's see so by wrapping our app in this so our react strict mode strict mode is now working okay and this this is the image that's actually let's actually just look at that image see if we can see So it's a vector file, and if we look at the CSS, it's actually a keyframe, so it's doing some animation. That's what's happening for spinning. So yeah, we can see here the spinning.
Uh, one thing I just want to notice, I want, want you to notice is I've edited and do a save. Now I go back, it actually updates. So now that we're using app, which I believe uh, somehow WebStorm is treating specially the, the name app possibly, not quite sure why, but now we just have to do a save. We don't have to refresh or reload in here because I've been reloading before. So let's go ahead and modify the app and then go back and just add in our check. ID was props.id. Sorry, yes. And we had a label. Props.label. And once we've done that, now we can go ahead and Let's do a save, save, and here we go. While we're at it, we can go ahead and get rid of some warnings. So we've got those logos to find but never use, so we can get rid of that. Okay. And this is centered because our app is centered. Let's go ahead and just change this. 